Yeah, no, I was, with, I was at Bonnaroo, and I performed, and then after my performance, the headlining band that evening was the band Radiohead, right? And, uh, oh, wow, you're in the band Radiohead. That is so, what a weird confluence of coincidence. That's awesome. Yeah, so I got to uh, go to the VIP section of the show, right? Like, I got to, because I had performed, I got to be in the VIP section, like, in the very front. Everybody else had paid, like, $1,000 to get that close to the band, and we were very close. We were, like, we were, like, as close to Radiohead as, like, you are to me right now, right? So, like, think about how fucking excited you are to be this close to me, right? Like, cut that in half. That is how excited I was to be that close. To re I was very excited. And there was like all kinds of people celebrating. And in the front area, the kind of, the kind of right next to me, there was another group of excited kind of, they, I, they were like kind of like bro-y, kind of like, like super bro, kind of like, you know, like, like just a, a circle of bros, like, oh, oh, sublime, 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 you know, just like, oh, oh. Why am I trying to describe it? They, you, they were you, basically. You just stand up, you just stand up. They were this guy, but just like, like all of this guy, like, I don't know why I was trying to paint a picture with my, don't sit down. I don't know why I was trying to, this guy is, you are the guy, right? Although, are you, are you Latino? Yes. Whoa, that's how white South by Southwest is. <laughs> Even the Mexicans are white here. That's amazing. All right, so, so, okay, you can sit. Uh, why am I, I'm like giving you orders. By the way, my courage goes down exponentially as I step off stage. When I'm on stage, I'm like, stand up, you fucking yoked out motherfucker, stand up, you muscle bound bro, up now. I get over there, it's like, thank you so much for not beating me. That's how I walk when I get off stage. Yeah, it's, you can't fuck my wife, dog. Okay, so he, he, he was there, right? The whole circle, but wider, way wider, right? Like, like whitest, right? And they, there was like a, they were all like, oh, oh, oh aggressive, oh, whiteness. And, and then they, they had like a, like a leader of their group, right? Like they had like the, you know what I'm saying? Like the, like the Papa Smurf of that frat or whatever. <laughs> You know, and he was like the, the super uber bro. He was like bro square. Like he was like everything about a bro. Like he was like, like full on, like perfect abs. Do you have perfect abs? Let's talk. Hey, shut the fuck up! I wish it was you that had said that. Fuck my wife guy. Let's see him, I'll fuck him too! Ooh! I don't know why he became a dragon at the end of the minute. Ooh! Anyway, I'm not gonna make that, that happen. What? Oh, you're down to show him? Let's see him. All right, so hold on. So he was like, he was like that, right? He had like a hoodie on, right? No shirt underneath, he had perfect six pack abs. Let's see him. You got him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to open, show the world, show the world. You're on TV right now. Huge mistake, huge mistake, huge mistake. You're gonna regret this when you have grandkids. Okay, so anyway. So, so he's like full on abbed out, like, oh, six pack, and then the little fold area where you aim your cum. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Like that gross little area. Like, I don't know, are abs really a thing that women like? I feel like women are trained to like abs, but they don't. Most women really want like a, like a little, like a little, you know, just a project to work on, like a failure belly. You know what I mean? Like, I can fix it or whatever. I feel like abs are there so that blind women know who not to fuck, basically. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No offense, I'm sure you fuck a lot. Okay, okay, so, so, okay, so he's there and he's like, oh, and he's wearing khaki cargo shorts, no shirt, khaki cargo shorts. Somehow he's wearing Uggs and flip flops at the same time. Some kind of impossible concoction he'd created in the bro lab. Just a bros bro, right? Like the broest. And I, I, he was amazing. And I turned at a certain point in the concert and I noticed that Ugg Flop has actually taken a knee. He's like down here like this and he's like demonstratively nodding along to Radiohead. But I look a little closer, I realize he's actually pulled his little shorts up and he's urinating. He is taking a piss in a crowd of thousands. Like it's fucking normal. I looked at him, I thought to myself, oh my God, this guy is either the biggest piece of shit at this entire music festival or the biggest Radiohead fan of all time. Like he can't even look away for one piss length's worth of time. He's just like, no way, dude, this is my favorite part. I too am a creep. Like, I couldn't believe it. I had to look again to get a sense of him. Is this guy like a high level performance artist or a fucking asshole? As I turn, he turns, we make eye contact. And he goes, quit looking at my dick, fag. I'm like, oh, I figured it out. I figured it out. He's an asshole. Think about what an asshole that guy is. Quit looking at my dick, fag. What does he think? Quit looking at my dick? What do you think, that's my plan? That's my strategy? That's how I bag a man? 
I pay $1,000 to get to the front of a Radiohead concert just hoping against hope that the unthinkable will happen and some awful mess of a bro will descend his date rape tube from within his khaki cargo shorts and create a growing puddle of double fermented Mike's Hard Lemonade for me to get a bone or two. So anyway, then Radiohead started playing that song, Karma Police. So I kicked the guy into a puddle of his piss. You guys have been so fun. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Good night.